the very warmest of welcomes to St. Edmundsbury Cathedral, those of you who are gathered with us here in this holy space, and those of you who are joining us on the live stream from home. In the face of the world's cynicism, superficiality, and self-serving, God gives us these nine wonderful women and men, deacons, who have offered their lives in service of Christ and his church to be ordained priest today by the laying on of hands. It fills me with awe and wonder every time I see lives prepared to offer themselves in sheer love. And you know better than I, you their families and friends and colleagues, the journey that's brought them to this place, and you pray for them. It's been wonderful for us to have them here at the cathedral for their retreat, as they've learned once again to make this space their own. And what has been even more wonderful has been the leading that's been offered by the Reverend Kate Massey, who's been our retreat conductor, who has helped them to relax, to be cherished, to hear the voice of God speaking to them. Kate, this is the last chance to say it, so from us all, the most huge thanks to you. All our journeys begin with baptism. It's what makes us part of the priesthood of all believers. And so this service begins with the renewal of our baptism. Please will you turn to face the font. We meet in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Amen. Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be the kingdom, now and forever. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. There is one Lord, which you will. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. Peace be with you. And also with you. A joy uh, to welcome you to the priesting of these nine deacons today. Pray please for Mark, for Tracy, for Oliver, for Sally, for Kieran, for Graham, for Chrissy, for Bill, and for Andy as they take this next step. As Dean Joe says, we begin at the font which marks the start of our Christian journey, baptism. Water is the visible sign of God's dealing with us. But it is only as it is joined to his word and the Holy Spirit that it is an effective sign. So too, you who are to be priested will be for us and for many a visible sign. But you too will only be effective insofar as you are joined to the word and the Spirit. So let us ask the Lord that you may be so joined and shaped and directed by that word and spirit. God calls his people to follow Christ and forms us into a royal priesthood, a holy nation, to declare the wonderful deeds of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvellous light. The church is the body of Christ, the people of God and the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. In baptism, the whole church is summoned to witness to God's love and to work for the coming of his kingdom. To serve this royal priesthood, God has given a variety of ministries. Priests are ordained so that the people of God may be better equipped to make Christ known. Theirs is a life of visible self-giving. Christ is the pattern of their calling and their commission. As he washed the feet of his disciples, so they must wash the feet of others. Baptism is the foundation of the ministry of the whole people of God, to witness to God's love and to work for God's kingdom. As we prepare for the ordination of those whom God has called to be priests, let us rejoice in our baptism into Jesus Christ, by which we share in God's call to be a royal priesthood.
Praise God who made heaven and earth. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, sovereign God of all, to you be glory and praise forever. You are our light and our salvation. From the deep waters of death you have raised your Son to life in triumph. Grant that all who have been born anew by water and the Spirit may daily be renewed in your image, walk by the light of faith, and serve you in newness of life. Through your anointed Son, Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit we lift our voices of praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God. Thank you, Archdeacon. Have those whose duty it is to know these ordinands and examine them found them to be of godly life and sound learning? Do they believe them to be duly called to serve God in this ministry? And to the ordinands, do you believe that God is calling you to this ministry? I invite the Registrar to confirm that the Ordinands have taken the necessary oaths and made the Declaration of Assent. They have duly taken the Oath of Allegiance to the Sovereign and the Oath of Canonical Obedience to the Bishop. They have affirmed and declared their belief in the faith which is revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds and to which the historic formularies of the Church of England bear witness. So let us pray for Mark, Tracy, Oliver, Sally, Kieran, Graham, Christine, William and Andrew for the ministry of the whole people of God.
God our Father, Lord of all the world, through your Son you have called us into the fellowship of your universal church. Hear our prayer for your faithful people that each in their vocation and ministry may be an instrument of your love. Give to your servants now to be ordained the needful gifts of grace. Through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. For the word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. It was evening on the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. God of love, take these humble words and by your spirit give them life, that they may point us to your living word, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please do be seated. Oh, 
how I love our first reading from Isaiah. My wonderful, soon-to-be priestly colleagues, did it not make your heart sing? Don't you want to be part of doing all those wonderful things? However, I am here to tell you they aren't the priest's role. Well, they are, and they aren't. Have I confused you yet? Well, let me explain. One of my favourite descriptions of priesthood is inspired by Michael Ramsey. It is years since I read his classic book, The Christian Priest Today. But this idea, if not the exact wording, has remained with me ever since. The priest is to approach God with the world on their heart and to approach the world with God on their heart. They are to approach God and intercede for those who are oppressed, broken-hearted, captive, imprisoned, mourning, and then turn back to the world, proclaiming by word and actions that they are to receive justice, be healed, released, and comforted. But this is not only the ordained priest's task. It is the priestly work of all God's people to pray for the world and then to live out God's heart for the world. Remember what we heard at the start. God calls his people to follow Christ and forms us into a royal priesthood, a holy nation, to declare the wonderful deeds of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvellous light. The church is the body of Christ, the people of God, and the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. In baptism, the whole church is summoned to witness to God's love and work for the coming of his kingdom. It is our baptism that calls us to proclaim good news and to bring justice, healing, forgiveness, freedom, and comfort. This is the work of the priesthood of all believers, the whole people of God. So why then do we ordain priests? Well, you can probably tell from my accent that I am not from round these parts. And some of our ordinands are aware that I grew up in Scotland and my background is in the Presbyterian Church. My childhood denomination does not have bishops, priests or deacons. We do ordain ministers, but only once. Trying to explain to my bemused Scottish relatives why a year after I was ordained deacon, they had to come back and do it all again was fun. But it meant I really had a bit of work to do when I found myself called to ordained ministry in the Church of England. What did it mean to be a priest? Well, there are a thousand answers to that question. I will share with you the answer I believe God gave to me. You are a priest, that they, all God's people in your place, might be priests. You are a priest, that they might be priests. We are not simply to serve God's people, but to serve their priestly ministry in the world. Again, I refer you to the opening words of our service, which I have to say, Bishop, should have come with a spoiler alert. Priests are ordained so that the people of God may be better equipped to make Christ known. What might that look like? This is another question I have neither time nor I confess the intellect to answer fully. Instead, may I offer you a modern-day parable from the time 
that the ordinance and I have spent together. The pre-ordination retreat this year, as you have already heard, was held here in the cathedral. This has meant that we have been blessed with the most wonderful, wonderful worship. And I hope you won't mind if I digress for a moment to thank all those involved, from the presenter to the smallest choir boy, and to all the friends they roped in along the way, for the great gift they are leading in worship has been to us. One night, we were hugely privileged to be present when the girl choristers sang Evensong for the first time um, since their foundation was re-established two years ago. They were amazing. Now, from where I was seated, just behind that pillar, I had the most wonderful view of the choir as they sang, and also the director of music, Tim, as he conducted them. I found it fascinating. And one of the things that struck me is that Tim, who I believe is the youngest director of, ministry, uh, of music sorry, in the Church of England, is such a passionate, gifted musician with years of training and practice, much more than these young girls beginning their journey in the choir. Yet in that moment, his job was not to perform himself, but to put all his talent, his passion, his years of hard work at the service of his choir. He enabled those choristers to inhabit that sacred music, bringing glory to God and blessing all who heard it as it enabled our prayers. It was beautiful. So, to our ordinance today, put all God has made you and all God has taught you at the service of God's people and help the church to sing. Help the church sing to God's glory and for the blessing of the world. Help the church sing of justice and freedom and healing and hope. And to everyone else, all of you gathered here to support our ordinance, whether in the building or on the live stream at home, sing with all your hearts. May your lives sing of God's glory and love and by God's grace become a blessing to all around. Now, returning to my friends soon to be ordained, if you feel slightly daunted by this responsibility, do not fear. Take heart from the words of Christ in our gospel. Peace, peace be with you. Receive the Holy Spirit. That prayer for the gift of the Holy Spirit lies at the very heart of all today is about. As the bishop will say in a few moments, it's my turn to issue a spoiler alert, but as he will say, you cannot bear the weight of this calling in your own strength, but only by the grace and power of God. Pray earnestly for the gift of the Holy Spirit. And all will be well, as Jesus assures us that God delights to give the Holy Spirit to all who ask. You will be priests, that all God's people may fulfill their priestly ministry. Go together, and may God's church sing. Amen.
So we stand to affirm our faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into death. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last day. Amen. Would the congregation please sit? Priests are called to be servants and shepherds among the people to whom they are sent. With their bishop and fellow ministers, they are to proclaim the word of the Lord and to watch for the signs of God's new creation. They are to be messengers, watchmen and stewards of the Lord. They are to teach and to admonish, to feed and provide for his family to search for his children in the wilderness of this world's temptations and to guide them through its confusions, that they may be saved through Christ forever. Formed by the word, they are to call their hearers to repentance and to declare in Christ's name the absolution and forgiveness of their sins. With all God's people, they are to tell the story of God's love. They are to baptise new disciples in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and to walk with them in the way of Christ, nurturing them in their faith. They are to unfold the scriptures, to preach the word in season and out of season, and to declare the mighty acts of God. They are to preside at the Lord's table, and lead his people in worship, offering with them a spiritual sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. They are to bless the people in God's name. They are to resist evil, support the weak, defend the poor, and intercede for those who are in need. They are to minister to the sick, and prepare the dying for their death. Guided by the Spirit, they are to discern and foster the gifts of all God's people, that the whole church may be built up in unity and faith. We trust that long ago you began to weigh and ponder all this, and that you are fully determined by the grace of God to devote yourself wholly to his service so that as you daily follow the rule and teaching of our Lord and grow into his likeness, God may sanctify the lives of all with whom you have to do. And now, in order that we may know your mind and purpose, you must make the declarations we put to you. Do you accept the Holy Scriptures as revealing all things necessary for eternal salvation through faith in Jesus Christ? Will you be diligent in prayer, in reading Holy Scripture, and in all studies that will deepen your faith and fit you to bear witness to the truth of the Gospel? Will you lead Christ's people in proclaiming his glorious Gospel, so that the good news of salvation may be heard in every place? Will you faithfully minister the doctrine and sacraments of Christ as the Church of England has received them, so that the people committed to your charge may be defended against error and flourish in the faith? Will you, knowing yourself to be reconciled to God in Christ, 
strive to be an instrument of God's peace in the church and in the world. Will you endeavour to fashion your own life and that of your household according to the way of Christ, that you may be a pattern and an example to Christ's people? Will you work with your fellow servants in the gospel for the sake of the kingdom of God? Will you accept and minister the discipline of this church and respect authority duly exercised within it. Will you then, in the strength of the Holy Spirit, continually stir up the gift of God that is in you to make Christ known among all whom you serve? Brothers and sisters, you have heard how great is the charge that these ordinands are ready to undertake, and you have heard their declarations. Is it now your will that they should be ordained? It is. Will you continually pray for them? We will. Will you uphold and encourage them in their ministry? We will. In the name of our Lord, we bid you remember the greatness of the trust that is now committed to your charge. Remember always with thanksgiving that the treasure now to be entrusted to you is Christ's own flock, bought by the shedding of his blood on the cross. It is to him that you will render account for your stewardship of his people. You cannot bear the weight of this calling in your own strength, but only by the grace and power of God. Pray, therefore, that your heart may daily be enlarged under your understanding of the Scriptures enlightened. Pray earnestly for the gift of the Holy Spirit.
praise and glorify you, Almighty Father, because in your infinite love you have formed throughout the world a holy people for your own possession, a royal priesthood, a universal church. We praise and glorify you because you have given us your only Son, Jesus Christ, the image of your eternal and invisible glory, the firstborn of all creation and head of the church. We play, praise and glorify you that by his death he has overcome death, and that having ascended into heaven, he has given his gifts abundantly to equip your holy people for the work of ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ. And now I give you thanks that you have called these your servants whom we ordain in your name to share as priests in the ministry of the gospel of Christ, the apostle and high priest of our faith and the shepherd of our souls. Therefore, Father, through Christ our Lord, we pray. Send down your Holy Spirit on your servant Mark for the office and work of a priest in your church. God, who anointed the Christ with the Holy Spirit at his baptism, anoint and empower you to reconcile and bless his people. Amen. Send down your Holy Spirit on your servant Tracy for the office and work of a priest in your church. the Christ with the Holy Spirit at his baptism anoint and empower you to reconcile and to bless his people. Amen.
send down your Holy Spirit on your servant Oliver for the office and work of a priest in your church. the Christ with the Holy Spirit at his baptism. Anoint and empower you to reconcile and to bless his people. Amen. Send down your Holy Spirit on your servant Sally for the office and work of a priest in your church. Amen. May God, who anointed the Christ with the Holy Spirit at his baptism, anoint and empower you to reconcile and to bless his people. Amen. Send down your Holy Spirit on your servant Kieran for the office and work of a priest in your church. May God, who anointed the Christ with the Holy Spirit at his baptism, anoint and empower you to reconcile and to bless his people. Amen.
send down your Holy Spirit on your servant Graham for the office and work of a priest in your church. May God, who anointed the Christ with the Holy Spirit at his baptism, anoint and empower you to reconcile and to bless his people. Send down your Holy Spirit on your servant Christine for the office and work of a priest in your church. May God, who anointed the Christ with the Holy Spirit at his baptism, anoint and empower you to reconcile and bless his people. Send down your Holy Spirit on your servant William for the office and work of a priest in your church. May God, who anointed the Christ with the Holy Spirit at his baptism, anoint and empower you to reconcile and to bless his people. Amen.
send down your Holy Spirit on your servant Andrew for the office and work of a priest in your church. May God, who anointed the Christ with the Holy Spirit at his baptism, anoint and empower you to reconcile and bless his people. Through your Spirit, Heavenly Father, give these your servants grace and power to proclaim the gospel of your salvation and minister the sacraments of the new covenant. Renew them in holiness and give them wisdom and discipline to work faithfully with those committed to their charge. In union with their fellow servants in Christ, may they reconcile what is divided, heal what is wounded, and restore what is lost. May they declare your blessings to your people. May they proclaim Christ's victory over the powers of darkness and absolve in Christ's name those who turn to him in faith. So shall a people made whole in Christ offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to you, our God and Father, to whom with the Son and the Holy Spirit belong glory and honor worship and praise, now and forever. Amen. I now invite the newly priested to stand and adjust your stole priestwise. Would the congregation please stand? God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. We welcome you as ambassadors for Christ. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us and as a pledge of what is to come has given us the spirit to dwell in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace.
to the Lord our God. It is right to be thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, your great High Priest. He was lifted up for us on the cross that he might reveal your glory and draw all people to himself. You exalted him to your right hand on high, and through your Holy Spirit you sent upon your people a rich diversity of gifts. From this royal priestly people you raise up ministers to proclaim your word, to care for your people, and to be the stewards of your holy mysteries. You call them to serve the world, your Son redeemed, and build up his body, the Church, to be his bride. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these your gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. 
For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. In the power of the Holy Spirit, as our Saviour taught us, so we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. And a prayer for those who are spiritually communing with us through the live stream at this time. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Oh. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, grant to your church today the faith of her apostles, the hope of her martyrs, and the love of her Lord, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Our Amen. Lord. We, we thank, thank you, you, gracious Father, for welcoming your children to feast in your kingdom. By your love, unite us, and with your Spirit, send us. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
So now we distribute Bibles and legal documents to the newly priested. Receive these books as a sign of the authority which God has given you this day to preach the gospel of Christ and to minister his holy sacraments. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord our God, for your word revealed in the scriptures. How sweet are your words, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light to my path. Blessed be God forever. So the sun is shining, so we process outside to the grass. If any have been listening to this service or participating today who feel that this prompts in them a sense of some, something that is calling them on further in different ways, then please feel absolutely free to talk, especially to somebody who has a dog collar on, who will be able to point you in all sorts of directions next. Peace be with you. And also with you. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts and the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. In the power of the Spirit, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.